Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Brunswick's Best, where Lance takes a look at the greatest players in Vikings history. This week, we take a look at those who have worn the number seven in the history of the Minnesota Vikings. So uh, why don't you lay that list on us, Lance, and tell us who you got. It's uh, I feel like it's been a while since I've been on camera here at Vikings on <laughs> Um, after our week layover, we're back, uh, back in action. If you didn't watch Rhino's Rants on Monday, go back and watch that. Um, and with that being said, let's get this thing on the road. Let's get this show on the road. Um, I got four guys here for you tonight. Um, pretty decent players. And uh, we will start off the list tonight with none other than Fouad Revez. Right? Revez? Revez. Revez. I even asked him before we filmed <laughs> right pronunciation, and I completely forgot. But yeah, as we, as, as we all know, Lance can misspell or mispronounce Smith. So misspell. I'm pretty good at spelling, but my pronunciation pronunciation is, is horseshit. Your spelling's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Revez was actually the kicker for the. Is that, I say it right again? Yeah, Revez. you got to write that down. Okay, good. <laughs> Anyways, he was the kicker when I first started watching the team play. Um, even though I don't know the right pronunciation of his last name, uh, I do uh, fondly and vaguely recall Reve being here when I first started watching. And with that being said, um, before he actually became a star on the Do It Yourself Network, uh, Fwad spent some time moonlighting, it, moonlighting as an NFL kicker. He didn't start out in Minnesota. He spent his first four seasons with the Miami Dolphins and uh, part of one of those seasons with the San Diego Chargers before signing with none other than our Minnesota Vikings midway through the 1990s season. Reves actually had a pretty decent run with the Vikings, connected on 77.8% of his field goals during his time in purple. He was named to the Pro Bowl in 1994. He actually set what was then an NFL record by hitting 31 straight field goals from October 10th of 1994 through September 17th of 1995. Um, pain in his planting foot caused Reves to hang it up after the 1995 season. Fwad, this week you made the list. One of my favorite things I remember about Reves was he was a guy who was never afraid to lay the wood to somebody. I think he probably leads kickers in personal foul penalties, if I remember correctly. He, That's he, funny. That's funny. I always like a kicker and a punter that can really lay the wood or try to lay the yep. wood. McAfee was good at it, too, for the for the Colts there for a mm -hmm. while. Janikowski with nobody to mess around with either for the Raiders. But this is Vikings Uncensored, so we'll stick with Viking shit. And let's get back to it. Um, second on my list is none other than Mr. Randall Cunningham. And now this is right in my wheelhouse where I really started to love the team, where I really started to get into Viking shit. And rightfully so. We had Moscow in that year. Um, actually, Cunningham spent his early career with the Philadelphia Eagles, like most of you should know. Um, rubber band man, of course. Uh, but had an, he had announced his retirement after the 1995 season was actually laying tile in Las Vegas in 1997. So this is a year and a half after he had retired when Dennis Green asked him to be the Vikings' backup quarterback. Um, he obliged Mr. Dennis Green, and he actually led the Vikings to a crazy 23-22 upset of the New York Giants in the 1997 playoffs in relief of Brad Johnson. And then was slated again to be back up in 1998 until starter Brad Johnson went down with an injury. And here comes Cunningham. Cunningham took over, and the rest is history. He lit it up that year in 1998. He actually helped to orchestrate a 15-1 record and what was then the highest scoring offense in the history of the National Football League. Three deep, baby. Now, the Vikings put up 556 points that season, and the team advanced to the NFC Championship game 
which we all sadly remember, before the season mysteriously ended before anything bad could happen. <laughs> yeah. Cunningham could not replicate that success the next season. However, as he was benched for Jeff George after six games, who we just recently discussed not that long ago, mm -hmm. um, and he was released by the team during the offseason. Cunningham had one great season for the Vikings, but man, what a season that was. Um, a season I will never forget. A season that I will always remember until I um, put speed under. So, yeah. That was a special one. And for that, Randall, you make the list. And that was my two main guys. Now, I do have a couple honorary mentions here. Um, some of you may disagree with this first one. Yeah, he wasn't the greatest quarterback, but I, I, I can't blame the guy for this. Um, nonetheless, I rooted for him the whole time he was here. I wish we could have seen more out of this guy in his time here, but uh, that didn't happen. And that guy is none other than Tavares Jackson. Jackson was actually selected with the last pick in the second round, which in my opinion was way too early to be drafting T. Jax at that, at that time. No, that was Brad Childers thinking he was smarter than he was in that lump of clay that he was. Oh, I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> the lump of clay quote, for sure. Um. Yeah, he was uh, projected to go much later uh, in the sixth or maybe even the seventh round of that draft. The Vikings actually traded two third round. We think we we think this is bad in this in this era, in this league year or, or this generation of the NFL. But the Vikings traded two third round picks to get the second round pick with which they drafted Jackson, fearing he might get picked sooner than anticipated. Not very smart. Um, Brad Childers obviously had that clay coat quote that Randy or that Randy, what the fuck, <laughs> that Rhino alluded to uh, a little bit earlier, a little bit what two minutes ago. If you all forgot, uh, you can rewind and and check it out. <laughs> but yeah, Childers was going on and on and on about it. Childers had one of the biggest egos for an offensive-minded coach that I can remember in a long time. He was always um, the smartest man in the room. Whether Exactly, you know. exactly. Um, I was never a big Childers fan, but this isn't about Childers. This is about Tavares. Um, he was with the team from 06 to 2010, uh, was let go in the 2010 offseason, and was then picked up by Seattle, which whom he went on to win a Super Bowl with as a backup behind Russell Wilson. Uh during his five years in Minnesota, he started 20 games, which is kind of a small small package of games there, with 10 wins and 10 losses. So he's ended his career here in Minnesota at 500. Uh, he threw for 24 touchdowns and gets 22 interceptions, completing 59% of his passes for 3,984 yards. Uh, he also rushed 119 times for 535 yards and four touchdowns. Now, not to make excuses for, for DeBarris Jackson, but when he was here at quarterback, he exactly didn't have the best supporting cast around him at receiver. Um, I think the best receiver he had was towards the end of his time here, and that was Bernard Berrien. But before that, it was a bunch Sid, of Sid, fucking... Yeah, Sidney Rice, maybe, but... Well, yeah, but even even then, um, Sidney was still just like a rookie towards mm -hmm. the end of the Jackson era here in Minnesota. Right. So, I mean, before that, it was Tom, Dick, and Harry, Dwayne Bates, fucking Michael Jenkins, I think, might have been one of them. Um, yeah, it wasn't good. So, and and the, and the Troy Williamson experiment, uh, experiment was right up the, that alley as well at that time. Uh, I can recall a pass that Jackson had against Denver. If, if you're a Vikings fan, you all know the pass I'm talking about. Throws it deep to Williamson, chance to take up, or chance to, to tie it up, and Williamson completely flubs the throw, or the, the catch, I should say. Um, another thing with Jackson is he was kind of, uh, he really put a lot of air under his deep ball. A lot of the times he would overshoot his receivers. Mm -hmm. um, 
But, I, you know, like I said in the beginning, I always rooted for this guy. I, I really would have liked to have seen what T-Jax could have done with our offense after Favre left after that 2010 season. Um, You know, just being behind Favre for a couple of years and, and studying what how he played the game and all that, I thought that would have went a ways with Tavares, but we never got the chance to see here in Minnesota. So, anyways... He left after the 2010 season and for all the work that he put in here and for getting drafted earlier than he really should have, um, he didn't do all that bad. So, um, for that, you made the list as a, I already mentioned Tavares and also rest in peace. Yes. Moving along here, we have somebody that was just with the team, uh, these last two seasons. And that is none other than Mr. Patrick Peterson, P2 himself. Now, Peterson signed with the Vikings on March 17th of 2021. He wore 21 during his time with the cards, but switched over to seven after the NFL uh, started letting these other players wear different digits. Um, Peterson entered the 2021 season as a starting cornerback for the Vikings. He started the first six games before suffering a hamstring injury in week seven. He did end up returning later in the season. Peterson, Peterson signed another one-year deal with the team after the 21 season. Peterson's second season here in Minnesota was up and down, but was considered the better of the two seasons that he spent here uh, by a lot of pundits. During his two years with the team, P2 started 30 games and hauled in six interceptions, taking one of those to the house. Two of those, which came against Buffalo, the second and one of those being the one that clinched the win there in Buffalo mm -hmm. this past year. Uh, he also had 90 tackles and 20 passes defensed in his two seasons here. So for those numbers and those numbers alone, and you know what? He was up and he was down a lot. He was hot and cold. A lot of the time, his play suffered early on in games, but then towards the end of the game, it, it would, you know, he did better, I yeah. guess you could say. Um, it always took a little bit for him to get into the groove, it seemed like, when he was here. But, you know, we'll see how he does in, in Pittsburgh after he left here. But I believe that he is definitely in the twilight of his career. All due respect to Patrick, but uh, I wish him well in Pittsburgh. And this week... You make the list as an honorary mention, Mr. Patrick Peterson. And uh, not to, uh, you know, bring up any bad memories or nightmares, but uh, I do have one dishonorable mention on this list this week, and that is none other than Mr. Christian Ponder, another quarterback we took a swing on and completely missed. Um, one of the biggest things I had with Ponder was his decision-making and just holding on to the ball for way too long or not trusting that he can get the ball to the receiver, you know. Um, well, a lot of times he couldn't because the guy had an arm like a freaking uh, – Noodle arm, for yeah. sure. Um, a lot of his game was, was running. Um, I mean, I wish he could have been better, but he wasn't. <laughs> and uh, eventually we found, out, we found that out the hard way, and uh, Peterson basically carried the team to their – to Ponder's only playoff appearance in the NFL. And uh, and he didn't even play in that game, so. Right, right. Um, and that was the year that Peterson had 2,000 yards, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I fucking believe no, so. That was the, the game where he Ponder got hurt against Green Bay in the final game of the season, so Joe Webb had to start the, the right. wild card game. That's right, yep. Yeah. Um, and for that, Ponder, I'm sorry, but you get – the big uh, skunk dishonorable mention this week. Wah, 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 wah. And with that, that wraps up this week's of Brun this week's episode of Brunswick's Best. Thanks all for watching. Catch us Friday night. We're going live. We're going live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. The NFL schedule comes out Thursday night, so Lance and I will be breaking down. The Vikings 2023 schedule, plus since we really have not uh, been on since the draft, we will do a quick wrap-up of uh, 
the draft picks, the undrafted free agents, and kind of give our thoughts on that as well. So make sure you tune in Friday night, 6 p.m. Join us in the live chat. Give us your comments. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, see you Friday. Skull. Cool.